crypto market remains volatile as usual. Yes, XRP seems to be moving higher, but what's interesting inside that is the intraday movement and how the price action is behaving right now. If you actually look at Bitcoin on the same intraday movements, this kind of gives you a clear picture, right? We had a level of support, we broke that to the downside. Now we are coming back up and retesting that level. Now that's what's happening right now in the market, but understand that stock market is moving higher. Stock market is grinding higher, breaking higher, this is on the same time horizon, and you see Bitcoin dropping while stock market breaking higher. So we'll have to think about what the correlation there is. And then come on here, look at dollar. While we focus on the movement to the downside in Bitcoin, we'll also see the movement to the upside in the dollar side of things. So we kind of get an idea like, okay, when dollar is going up, we are watching how the price of crypto market is moving. So while we follow this, we kind of get a little bit of clarity about how things are evolving, right? That's what's happening right now. But is that all? No, the macro stuff, especially if you actually look for the fundamentals of XRP, it's now increasingly become more attention seeking in terms of the central bank digital currency era. While you actually listen to this, you'll get the understanding like the thought process here is like trillion dollar asset class, multi-trillion dollar asset class. And Ripple is going to be a player inside that. XRP Ledger is going to be stronger version. Right now, yes, there is a lot of regulatory uncertainty within the US, but you are seeing that the ability is there. It has the ability to interact with XRP Ledger and use XRP as a bridge currency. So you will definitely see all these fudsters trying to put the note will not use. That's an entirely different story considering like they can use, right? Now, the macro is still there. The micro is moving. Something which is interesting right now is what the biggest investors think and what they are doing. Not only what they are saying in the market, but what they are doing. This I believe is going to be massively important for all of us. Welcome to the Scientific Investor family, where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10 person of this world. While we look at this, understand this is just showing you like how these big investors are positioning themselves and the way it seems it's like the biggest short position right it's actually increasing so these two charts are simply fabulous showing you the short positions in level of history we are looking at last 10 20 years this is super huge now you come to the equity side of things that's where it gets even more interesting look at what was there in 2008 or just before 2008 the crisis happened. The great financial crisis happened this time. People were buying in as the stocks were dropping. But when it was at the all-time highs, people were shorting the hell out of it. Great. So right now, we are at that range. So I'm like, okay, if you actually go into the stock market to see what it is doing, now there will be confusion because you'll have to say like, okay, Dow Jones is going higher. You actually see like, okay, that's like the top 30 companies in US, then you are looking at the top 100 companies in the US. But I would actually give you guys a thought process like zoom out and see where you are right now. Because the market, if you actually focus on that, you dropped 40%, close to 40%, right? Now we are trying to bounce back up. You've been around this range consolidating for some time. So if you actually think about it, it's been a year or just about a year we are consolidating through that range. So it does show you one fact. What's that? The market suggests that right now, risk on sentiment is re-entering the market. A bearish pattern breaking bullish is huge. Now, did we actually get divergence? Yes, that's still playing really strong here. Right now, you observe the pattern, you see like, okay, the pattern broke higher, but that was a bearish pattern. So it's like bulls are pushing it through, 
risk on sentiment is back in the market. Now, why is that so important for anyone who is holding cryptocurrency right now? Because the dollar is still going up. It doesn't change the fact that dollar is moving higher, right? Now, that's on a shorter time horizon. When you move back and as we discussed, we know what we are eyeing it, right? We share this thought process clearly saying, okay, this is the level of support where the price is bouncing from. So what are we looking after this? The level of resistance here seems to be strong. It has to be like this, right? A resistance which turned into a support, which turned into a resistance. So that's more or less the zone we should be eyeing as the dollar goes back up. So it's going to get rejected somewhere here, which is going to be positive for the crypto market because we just saw the fact that on the short term horizon, while the dollar was going up from 100 towards where it is right now, 103.5, crypto market dropped. Great. But what's the trend here? This is way more important than all these other stuff. You've been going up, 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 and now you're correcting back down which is a strong movement. Now, do you actually see the big wave of corrective trend ending here? I personally don't because after you do such a big rally to the upside, either you do a distribution, then go down with an ABC pattern. You can actually clearly observe the market doing that ABC leg here. And right now, what we want to see is something similar, ABC. Now, we don't know how low it's going to go, but we are going to be following that for sure. Now, while we jump back in the intraday with an understanding of, okay, something is happening in the market. What's it? Risk on sentiment. While we look at XRP on the daily and then go take a look at Bitcoin on the daily, there's something different, right? Bitcoin dropped from 27,500 all the way down to 26,500. So Bitcoin dropped 1,000 dollars a day that's an engulfing bearish candle so it kind of erased last four five days of movement to the upside with just one candle to the downside at a time when xrp moved up and it's a consistent move up from some time now this is one of the important reason why we gave this thought process last time the wave one the wave two the wave three of microstructure playing out great Come back here and look at this. While you got the breakout in the trend line from the RSI, price didn't actually break through. So you may actually think like, mm, it's a fake out. We are going to go back down, massive, big time. But is that how the market plays out? Most likely when everyone says that we are going down, that's the time when the market usually say, now nah, I'm going to the other direction. That's why only minority make it in the market. So now we're coming back here. We are looking at the RSI, the trend line. We are breaking to the upside. While we were breaking here in the RSI, look at the volume, consistent volume increasing. And here we're able to see something similar. The volume is increasing. That's on a daily and it's pushing through. It's pushing higher. So selling volume may come today. We don't know. We are reaching that level of resistance. But then you actually enter onto the short term charts, the intraday movement for XRP. And it kind of shows you, okay, we had a level which acted as a support. Uh -huh. We then broke this level, which seems bullish. After which we are now moving like this. So if you just change what we are looking at into a line chart, it kind of shows you like, okay, we just broke higher from this level. We made a new high. Mm -hmm. We came back, put in a new high, which is a higher low. Then we went back up, putting in a higher high. So you kind of show like, okay, higher high, higher low, higher high. So the trend just changed in that four hour scenario. But now look at the RSI. RSI is making a lower high, but it did not make a lower low yet, which is like, okay, we may still get one more bounce before we go down. But usually look at this. While you got the first level of major divergence here, the market went back up. Now, did you go back and retest that level? Almost, but not exactly. So that can still be in the picture because, you know, when Bitcoin drops massively, we cannot neglect the fact that, okay, it's going to influence the market for sure. Bitcoin kind of, you know, plays the way it wants to and altcoin kind of follows it. 
And that is one of the reasons why when we discuss about the macro perspective about Bitcoin and the entire crypto market, we most likely focus on the Bitcoin dominance side of it. Because if Bitcoin dominance is coming back down to this level, it is an important level. Remember, while you make the structure go up, trend higher, and then consolidate, you now have an open window to retest this level. And that's on a daily chart. It's not on the short-term intraday level. Because it's actually the perspective which we want to see, right? On the daily we actually understand we are at the resistance level where we have been staying for a couple of years. And you put in the indicator, say we use the RSI for the time, and we are able to see a divergence forming. Now, what does that mean? On a daily, RSI did make a higher high, but the R I mean, the price did make, on a daily, the price went up, Bitcoin dominance made a higher high. At a time when the RSI made a lower high and it is still consistently doing that. So the price is at the all-time highs, which is way above this level. But RSI shows you something else. So I'm like, okay, we will have to look at this. Because initially, while you got the divergence here, the price dropped once and twice, but it was still trending higher. Now, why is it important to look at the intraday as well? as the macro scenario, because if you are following the macro trend line here, you would most likely say, okay, this is a trend line which you're observing, or you can plot it like this. If you are conservative, you would say, okay, let me go for the macro maximum touches where the market didn't fake out. Imagining that this is a fake out. That means now you say that the market has room to the upside. If it actually wants to do something, it can still go to 51, 52 percent, which is still possible. Now, what's it going to do, right? That's something important. Now, while you actually follow Bitcoin dominance, you also have to understand, yeah, what we talked about there is the daily. And right now, what we are looking at is a weekly. We are starting to form that divergence here on the weekly. And usually when we get that near the all-time highs and all, we may actually do another leg to the upside, making the market confusing. Or the market is trying to literally push you to the other direction and then go to the other direction. So we'll have to follow this on a level where we understand, okay, this is happening right now. We shouldn't be going against it. If you focus on the price action and the wave structure of this, this is a short-term structure, not a macro structure, right? And it actually shows you like the first leg is done, the second leg is done, maybe you're going to come back down. Now, if it happens to be a double bottom here, that still is possible, fine. But most likely you may drop to 47. That means while Bitcoin drop, all coins remain a little bit stronger than Bitcoin. So now you come back to the Bitcoin side of things on a photo a chart and we are looking at the trend line. We kind of see like, okay, we had this level acting as a support. Right now, that same level is acting as a resistance. Great. We got rejected there. And it is also important, equally important, I would say, to see whether we are going to break higher from this level because that's a trend line forming there right now. So we'll also have to see whether we are breaking this to the downside or to the upside because a couple of times the price dropped below that level but bias immediately came in, pushing the price back higher. That is interesting to see, meaning whenever the price is going below that range, someone is interested in this asset, buying more and more and drying up the supply, which exists in the market to sell, right? Now take the same ideology, same thought process and jump onto XRP on the intraday side of things. Yes, we are watching the short term movement to the upside, which is positive, it's not negative, but then we actually want to see like what's the higher time frame structure looking like. You actually can put it like this one and you can say like, okay, we still have some room. So if we are right, we may actually get a bounce towards 0.5 close to that level, which will actually be testing this level of resistance. Now, think about this in a different way. You have a pattern evolving where you are moving up, down, up, down, up, down, making all this noise. And now you are going to retest this level, which can be a resistance zone. It can attract sellers, those who short the market, 
may jump in there. And that is where we have to go on to a higher time frame to see, okay, if that's true, great. We are going to actually see a lot of people jumping in and out. And most likely, it would be like, do we really have room to the upside? Are we really making some kind of divergence? Remove all these and look for divergence. Like when the price is dropping. Now, this is important if you are looking at XRP in short term. You are looking at the price fluctuation and the possibilities, right? Price is making a lower low at a time when the RSI is suggesting you are making a double bottom. I'm more interested in going up. That was one of the reasons why we were saying, okay, we're getting a divergence. Focus on this. We may actually break higher. Break higher from what? This trend line resistance. Now, yes, trend lines do exist. So we got that point. Like once you broke that level, you saw the price immediately pushing to the upside. Great. Now, on the support resistance level in the market, or at least the psychology of the market, considering what can be the next level of resistance, we are actually reaching at this level. Now, imagine if we actually put in a uh, FIB to see the retracement, you actually ran higher like this, which looks attractive. Good, we have done that. And we came back to like somewhere close to 0.786 or in between 0.618 and 0.786. That is like a strong retracement level, which we have seen in the past. Like if we actually look at what XRP have done before and try to see like what we are doing right now, it kind of falls in the same area, right? The retracement happens to be in between 0.618 to 0.786 before the next leg went up. Now, we want to actually see like how far that actually went up. So you actually do this and see like, okay, last time you went just above 2.618. Great. So if we assume like, okay, this time, maybe we are not going to get more volume. Maybe we are not going to go into a FOMO. But we are only looking at the anticipated range here, or just above that. So that is still 0.8. Now, go back to whatever we've been talking. Like, we were talking about this. We're going to get another move to the upside. Now, no one knows when that's actually coming in. For sure, agreed. But while we go into the short-term charts, we do get to see things a little bit earlier. We do get to call out these divergence and the price bounces before it actually happens. So if that's true, while we actually focus through all these different assets, all these different thought process, which is happening in the market right now, kind of gives you an idea like, okay, what exactly is doing? Literally, it kind of gives you the information a little bit earlier while you go through a ton of these assets, right? We've been following a lot of these assets regularly because right now in the market, if Bitcoin dominance is about to drop, that means you are about to watch altcoins going higher. Now, don't jump into altcoins which has a volume level like this. When you observe, okay, that just went 10x up. But the volume looks like this. And if that's the case, you really don't want to be in an asset with a dollar trading or $10 into trade, right? Now, coming back into the matter. If we actually believe like the market is actually taking on a risk on sentiment, now you literally have to ask you a question going back to what we were talking about from some time. I saw in the comment section someone asking like, okay, this like you are repeating the same. And I'm like, okay, this is really important to repeat it unless that happens. I see people talking about in the comment section like, okay, there are some things which are being repeated. And I'm like, okay, yeah, because the market history doesn't change. Right? When you look at the short term, you get new movements, you analyze that as it is. But right now, while you look at the medium term, yeah, you're looking at a corrective action. But then when you zoom back out, this is what you're looking for, the macro narrative. You are now rounding back up. The first phase of a bull market is like this. Not a lot of people agree that it is bullish. Right? So guys, if you received value for your time, please do hit that like and subscribe button. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.